And then we're building kind of like an eight foot platform for an actual Buddha statue. So the statue is going to sit on top and that's the Buddha bar feeling. A Buddha bar feeling. This show is going to be great. One of the subscribers sent me a personal message and told me to check out the three episode documentary series called The Big Day that released on Netflix this Valentine's Day. Your boy is a single lonely man who is addicted to watching content for work so I took the plunge of trying to understand what all the hype is about. The wedding industry in India is worth close to 50 billion dollars that has circumvented its way to even thrive during the pandemic with much more intimate events but you all know peers from your circles who were having massive bashes even when the pandemic was at its prime that's how obsessed and connected we all are for these occasions they represent gatherings of friends and family to celebrate the union of two people what is undeniable however is that the indian wedding also represents what kind of an impression you can create with people depending on the quality and the size of arrangements you have done while i would like to believe that millennials and the gen z aspire to do more intimate events events that are catered to them rather than creating an impression to impress people that you may not even care about i think we will be naive not to acknowledge the shosha and khatirdari that it is in the blood of many indians so it was justified that a show will be created in order to showcase what really goes down at indian weddings little did i know that i was on a trip down a rich nri privilege bubble for most of these episodes as the minutes of the series passed by i realized that the rich and influential in society couldn't care less of making the event about themselves in contrast they actually are the caricatures of the viredi wedding father and mother who want the couple to sit on a make believe moon so that pinky auntie from punjabi bag and Simon Aunty from Maharani Bagh can boast about it in their kitty parties. The three episodes follow specific themes and I'll tell you exactly why I have so many mixed feelings regarding this show and what it represents and not surprisingly what is the real intention of creating it in the first place. The first episode has to be the most nauseatingly privileged and disconnected episode of the three. It focuses on two heterosexual couples that get married in Jaipur and Chennai respectively. Most of the families describe themselves as coconuts as they are brown from the outside but white from within as they migrated to foreign countries at a young age and the children while indian grew up pretty much american the first episode is the perfect description of the development of indian weddings from an event personal to the couple to just a random diwali mela on crack If Sanjay Leela Bansali was given an unlimited budget for a film the opulence with which he would design his sets imagine those same sets now just tacky this would exactly be it you are constantly reminded throughout the episode of how personal the occasions and the arrangements will be and then you see the actual event and you're like what's personal about a creepy mad hatter from Alice in Wonderland roaming around during the mehndi No matter how much of a movie buff I can turn out to be, I know my friends will not RSVP to my event if I theme a random wedding event to my favorite show Peaky Blinders. I mean, it'll look dope, but isn't that excessive? Okay, this might be just me. Am I tripping right now? Okay, l- let's carry on. The effectiveness even in a documentary series permeates if there is a personal touch to it. The sad reality especially of the first episode that will test your patience is that the couple and their story is just a footnote to the episode. The episode is actually dedicated to the meticulous planning and execution of the event by the wedding planners, designers and costume specialists. They are the limelight of the first episode, which made me also come to the conclusion of why this show was made in the first place. This is where Anmol Jambal becomes detective Byomkesh Bakshi for 5 seconds. The series is produced by Candan Asked India. The properties that they manage and produce include GQ, Vogue, etc. The goal of wedding organizers, planners and many other people who organize events is to get featured in these magazines so that their businesses can get promoted. What's a better way other than me publishing your work on my magazine than to produce a 3 episode series on Netflix where you can basically do it in the flesh? The big day may be presented as what Indian weddings are like and a celebration of love, but it's actually just a marketing campaign for these wedding organizers so that you can fall in love with any of their aesthetics and eventually call them to arrange your wedding. Get it? <laughs> Oh 
Okay, coming back to this irritating episode. You know, whoever has international friends who know very little of India, they tend to ask the most surface level questions about the country. I remember going for my exchange program to Germany and them simply being blown away that I could speak in English. It's funny how one of the couples while being Indian are as ignorant as those foreigners. You can literally take a shot each time one of them says the word spiritual in connotation to coming back to India. It is constantly stated that they want to reconnect to their roots with their wedding, but end up designing the event with Fabergé eggs and Victorian designs. What's Indian about this in any way? The 8 foot Buddha statue next to the bar for a Buddha bar vibe and an entrance that looks like the Temple of Doom from Indiana Jones just makes it 10 times more cringier. The other wedding while still rooted in sourcing from the locals to employ people from that very location is still tolerable, but I couldn't stop laughing at this photograph. as it perfectly represents an indian man's introduction to the white man of what india is all about we put on the hat of the perfect host while they mockingly do bhangra to feel marginally indian i mean honestly who am i to judge what you're going to do with your own money for your own event you do you but for me as a show is about how weddings are organized there is no focus on the blue collar workers who are actually doing the physical labor of organizing the events most of the show presents the wedding organizers as the stars while the people arranging the food setting the shamianas and convoluted structures are just mere montages to the show Weddings provide employment to these workers and their perspective would have been interesting as well. The last straw of this episode was when I saw Terence Lewis create a parallel to the wedding event as he performed for the couple. Stage show. Think of it like a award ceremony. Think of it the Oscars. It's like the works. Thoda zyada ho gaya. The second episode is still levels above what episode 1 could not do. Peak my interest. And I think this is an episode that the modern woman of India will really connect with because it focuses more on the personal and Indian traditions than the surface level arrangements of the event. It represents the modern Indian woman that not only has agency but takes charge of what exactly they want for their wedding. Labeled as bridezillas or problematic, it's just women being clear about what they want. This is also the point where Twitter India would also have a field day by labeling the show anti-national because it also questions the patriarchal proceedings at weddings, especially the kanya daan which represents a shift of responsibility from the girl's family to the boys, which many women think is an archaic practice as if commodities are being traded. The episode also is poignant as it sheds light on the different thought processes of generations where one is taking charge and is clear of what they want the elders are learning to accommodate to these thought processes which were once considered to be blasphemous also it's important to acknowledge that majority of indians don't have the privilege to have such free and independent thought that can take up a social cause and apply it in practice while the family is understanding of their beliefs by the way you can still take a shot every time a foreigner or an nri says the word spiritual the episode at least brought up the discussion of what the events even represent the most personal touch and which is heartbreaking in many ways is episode 3 which also explores a gay wedding in india a rarity in many ways and an event that many lgbtqi couples can only dream of having the story of tyrone and daniel will truly win your heart and also tell you the sheer torrid psychological and emotional journey many couples of the community have to go through just to be accepted from the discussions about conversion therapy family conflict and finally an entire community getting together to support their love it is a story that is genuinely touching and heartfelt the other couple and its story is just generic in every way it just represents first world and rich people problems no shade to them but it doesn't really communicate something impactful in contrast to the other couples so finally I finished a 3 episode series which was technically just an ad campaign for me to choose who to hire to organize my wedding This is in my world Disappointed I don't want to be too harsh about the show but there are moments that are thought provoking and genuinely touching but you have to go through the torture of the first episode to even seek for that The series is definitely representative of a minority and privileged class in India and in no shape or form provides an accurate representation of what happens across the country. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. This is the same argument with a film like Dil Dhadakne Do. It's a premise based on the rich and influential, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a story to tell. While finding the impactful moments in the big day might be like finding a needle in a haystack, this show can be sidelined as some of the guilty pleasure viewing you can do when you have nothing in the day to do. 
And that was the video, guys. Write it down in the comments below what you thought about the show. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handles are right in front of you. Follow me at Jamie Pants Four. Also, please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.